more time to practice that pronunciation. Manager Ivano Bonetti is still not fit to play. In central midfield, Gavin Ray was a Scotland sub in midweek and could make his full international debut in Poland next month. One notable name not in the starting lineup, he'll start on the bench, is long term absentee Fabian Caballero. An older and better known Argentinian, Claudio Canigia, is back page news again. It was reported today that Celtic and several English Premiership clubs want to sign him. Another veteran striker, Ali McCoist, must have something about Dens Park. His last start for Kilmarnock was here six months ago, and he's recalled for this one. The other notable inclusions on this Kilmarnock team sheet are Colin Meldrum in goal in place of the suspended Gordon Marshall, and a first appearance for Spaniard Jesus San Juan, the former Airdrie midfielder. His compatriot, Antonio Calderon, who also signed this week, will watch from the stand as San Juan slots into the Killy midfield alongside Mitchell and Mahoud, with Ian Durant out for the foreseeable future and Gary Holt gone. The referee for Dundee against Kilmarnock is Tom Brown. Kilmarnock could do with a win. They've won only once in their last seven games. Their last defeat, of course, being in the CIS Cup final. Losing 3 0 to Celtic. Big Darvo there caught offside. The Monarch two points ahead of Hearts as things stand in the fourth spot in the SPL. And Zanti's pass delivered to the outside of the right foot. A little bit too pacey for Javier Artero. Too many Scots on the pitch, but one who will be of interest to Craig Brown is the man he called up to his midweek squad Gavin Ray and Ray might well make his first start for Scotland in Poland Lindela San Juan good pass onside Craig Dargo a good run chance for the opening goal for Dargo three and a half minutes gone and Jesus San Juan has an immediate impact for Kilmarnock. The slide rule pass and Dargo timed the run to perfection. Spotted the gap, the Spaniard. It was always looking pretty inviting between Coyne and Smith. And then it was up to Dargo to do the finishing. And he placed the shot carefully through the legs of Rocati. So it's the ideal starts for Kilmarnock. They lead by a goal to nil. Well, you can't start with your new club much better than that. Played forward by Mitchell, here's Dargo again. Saved by the legs of Marco Rocati this time. A chance there for Dargo to score twice in uh, not much more than a minute. Again, it's pretty unimpressive defending from Dundee. from Smith and any thoughts Dundee had about attacking but they certainly had to do some defending there and indebted here to Rocati for the save with his legs as Dargo threatened to do what he'd done a matter of moments earlier please header San Juan McPherson back from McCoyst Anza Ray Kanisha. Superb skills from Kanisha. Good one from Artero. He could have made a lot more of that, Javier Artero. The run was good. The pass was perfectly placed. And you felt there might just be something on there for Dundee, prompted by the skills of Kanisha.
McPherson to a coist. Hit it away by Coyne. Carranza turning away from San Juan. That's for Juan Sara. Here's a chance for Dundee to square the game. Which Sara does. 28 minutes gone. And that's Juan Sara's 15th goal of the season. Sending out his religious message as ever. Dundee now back in the game. Having made a pretty indifferent start to this match. This was good play from Carranza, the measured pass. And he had the skill and the strength and the composure inside the penalty box, Sara, to do the rest. It's a good, calm, composed finish. As Meldrum came off his line, Sara danced away from him and knocked the ball into the net. 1-1 at Dens Park. <laughs> Foul by San Juan on Morocco. Carranza for Canisia this time. Claudio Canisia nudged off the ball in the penalty box by Kevin McGann. He looked up hopefully towards Tom Brown the referee was shaking his head and he certainly lifted though by that goal here's Smith and that's good play from Innes very cool in defence but uh, Kinesia thought he had a decent shout for a penalty here it was Kevin McGowan who was doing the defending and I think the referee got that right. Barry Smith. Short of the pass, but gets a second chance. Gavin Ray. Well struck. It just lifted up and over the top of Colin Mildrum's crossbar. But well worth a crack. Zanzi to Kanisha wants it back but the pass was over hit McGowan for McPherson it was short in the step to Morocco and now Carranza here's Marcelo Morocco got himself into a good position and it's kicked off the line by Freddie Dindala Sara was at the near post Kanisha was at the back post Neither could get the touch that this needed to divert it into the back of the net. In fact, it was missed by everyone. It looked as if uh, Dundala got contact here, but I think it was a fresh air shot. And uh, it spun wide. That was Coyne's header. Launched downfield by Dundala. Confusion between Morocco and Tweed, and that was a chance again for Dargo. Marco Rocati was outside his penalty box. Two Dundee defenders didn't quite know what to do with this, and it all left Dargo with a chance to loft the ball into the unguarded goal. Gary Hay. A loose pass. Carson though. Turning it into a decent one. San Juan. And McCoyst. That was a decent chance in Ellie McCoyst's book. Disappointed here to shoot straight at Rocati. Again, San Juan was the setup man. It was a good touch from McCoyst to get the ball under control. But he really wanted to fire that one wide of the goalkeeper. Gary Hay. Plays the 1-2 with McCoyst. Cleared by Tweed. A crucial header from Sala. Offers an opportunity to Artero. 
And that was too close to the keeper to be a great problem for Colin Mildrum. Don't we have it back though? Artero now and Kanisha should have scored. And he knows it. Played through quickly by Artero. And you would have imagined that Kanisha would have found the net from that sort of position. And be a lot livelier. Artero lets the ball run so that his fellow Spaniard, San Juan, can get some treatment. Here is what happened. It was his challenge on Nimzadze, and you can see immediately the look of anguish on his face, and he's reaching for his right knee. Match started so well for him. Here's his San Juan. But as the halftime whistle beckons, that looks like the end of the action for him. And time for Mark Riley to come on. Great to Namzadzi. Barry Smith never misses an opportunity to get forward. It's a chase for Artero. Did well to squeeze that into the box. Kanisha trying to find some room. Support from Smith. In comes Gavin Ray. That's a brilliant finish by Ray, three minutes into the second half. What a week he's had. Called up by Scotland, he sat on the bench for the match against San Marino. His international chance will come, but how well he took his chance here. To Scott for the heart of the goal, it was Barry Smith's cross, the well-timed run from Ray, and he directed the header just where Colin Meldrum couldn't get to it. Kinesia involved in the build-up as well. But it was Gavin Ray bursting through from midfield and putting Dundee 2-1 in front. Puto Carranza's header to Nemzadze. Put off there by McPherson's challenge. Dargo wrestling for possession and raised his hands. A flash point in this match and a red card for Craig Dargo. You have to keep your hands down, that's what the rules say. He wasn't happy about the challenge of Tweed. There was some arm wrestling going on, there was a shove by Tweed and there was the reaction of anger from Dargo and Kilmarnock are down to 10 men. Georgia Nimsanti. Artero. Nimsanti again. And Ray. And I take a deflection and ended up being a reasonable test of Colin Meldrum. He's got one, obviously fancies another. It flicked off Dundala and it was heading in under the crossbar until it was grabbed by the goalkeeper. McLaren looking for Di Giacomo. Tipped it in well. Gary Hay, good skill, gets to the byline. Up goes Morocco and up goes Gus McPherson and Kilmarnock are level. Great ability here from Gary Hay to get away from Stephen Tweed. Chipped it up over the head of Morocco and the last touch, in fact, was off Alan Mahoud. So Gus McPherson might claim it all he likes, but this will go down as Alan Mahoud's goal from just a couple of feet out. Nemzadze, <laughs> Tero. Caballero's first touch. And wins a corner kick. The big guns are up. 
Stephen Tweed will aim to make his presence felt in the penalty box. Coyne and Ray are there as well. Alongside Sara and Kanesia and Caballero, the three Argentinians. And it was Kanesia with a flashing effort at the near post, which agonizingly for him went wide. And Zanzi with the corner kick. And a well timed run by Kanesia, wide of Meldrum and wide of the post. to Morocco and Tweed Kamija gets it back from Ray it's a great run from Kamija finally stopped by McGann Gary Hayes got pace his run was halted by Smith Arteros flick to Sara. Barry Smith hearing up on the outside, but it's instead it's Sara with a chance. Here's Gavin Ray's offside. It won't count. If the pass had been played quicker, Dundee might well have won the match here. You got the feeling that Sara dwelt on it for too long, and by the time he played in Ray. The flag was up. If he played it there, he's onside. But the fraction of a second delay meant that up went the flag. And Ray finished well, lofting the ball over Meldrum, but all to no avail. A minute added on now. Sarah to Ray. This has to be the last chance. Caballero running into a brick wall. And that's the full time whistle. And Ivano Bonetti and Dundee have to settle for a point, and I can think you can see the disappointment written all over the manager's face. Kevin Ray, three minutes into the second half, had headed in what looked to be a very significant goal at the time. It's been some week for him with his phone call from Craig Brown during the week, followed by the header, which he thought might be the winner here. But Talon Mahoud had other ideas, and Dundee's battle for a top six place goes into the final two games before the split. Two all, it's finished at Dens Park. Bobby, happy with the point, down to ten men? Yeah, very pleased with that. Uh, that consolidates in six, the top six anyway. But uh, we want to try and find shop as high as possible. You got off to a great start today with that early goal. We did, but we didn't build on it. I feel we created chances, but uh, on the day we never took them. And uh, could have gave us a wee bit of daylight between us and Dundee. But they're a capable team, as they proved, and they get back in it. And uh, they went 2-1 up, but uh, thankfully we got there in the end. It was reported today that uh, Celtic want to sign Claudio Canizia and mm. four English Premiership clubs as well. What is what is happening? Is anything happening? I mean, I, is, I, mean well, I tell you the truth, uh, uh, I'm not surprised if some some club won won bring Canizia. Canizia got two years of contract. If someone won Canizia, he had to speak official with the club. But and, and in the meantime, we don't have heard about nothing. And then we. We carry on for our way anyway. Have you spoken to Kinesia? Because the report said that his agent had been contacted. No, I, d I didn't have a chance because I, I went to Justin Cross in Scotland last night and then today we, we because there is nothing official what I can talk with Kinesia. <laughs> nothing. How much how much would it cost to buy him? Well, from my opinion, I'll tell you the truth. I believe he is the he's, the he's uh, uh, together with Larson is the best striker in the Scotland. Now you have to give me the price and then we will see. This is the truth. <laughs> you don't put a price tag on him? No, no, but uh, until million? there is not, no, until one million for Larson. What, how much you no, want to spend for Larson? No, no, tell me it's, how it's much you want to spend for Larson, then I'll tell you how much I it costs. I can't afford Larson. <laughs> I can't afford Canizia. Yeah, yeah, I can afford Canizia too, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if there is something official or not, but uh, I don't think so at the moment there is nothing. Yeah, Benetti, not the first guy who's had trouble getting money out of Rob McLean, I can guarantee that. Um, we'll be talking about Canadia in just a moment. What about this home record, though, Jim, for, for Dundee? It's over four and a half months now since the last one a league game. That's Dundee's big problem, isn't it? We know they're an erratic team, and when they play, they're actually a very good team, a very exciting team, as, as we saw in, in this afternoon's game. But their home form is appalling, and, and they've lost two points again, come out down to ten men, and they still can't get the three points. You know, and they'll be kicking themselves because they're now, I think, they're in sixth place, 
and you know they're, they're three points behind them. They have a game in hand, mm -hmm. but they've dropped two points here needlessly today again. But they did create a lot of chances, but they didn't take enough of them. Well, let's talk about Kanija. As Rob said, it's been making headlines. It's by no means only today. The, this story has been rumbling on that perhaps both halves of the old former interest that he again showed today on countless occasions, didn't he? Just how valuable a player he is. Well, he did. I mean, he does that most times he plays now. You know, he, he just that was a great ball through to Artero. You know, he just it's his vision uh -huh. and he's touched the weight of pass. You know, that's that's the, the key to his game, I think. He's just, he plays at a different level from us and, and, you know, our players, just the speed of thought as well. All these players around him and he still wriggles away and gets that delightful ball through to Artero again. You know, um, it's just, he's a very difficult player to contain. I'm not sure, you know, he's not clearly in Larson's league. He may have been at one time and I'm sure he was. And he's, you know, he comes through himself here and that's probably the weakness. Yeah. You know, Benetti's saying that with Larson's a great striker, that was a terrible finish. This is a decent header. It actually looks closer than it is. If you see it from an, the, another angle, it's quite a bit away. But he's, too, he's touchy of his chest both times. And he goes on a long bursting run here, 34 years of age. There's poor Gus McPherson. You know, he's left there <laughs> gasping for oxygen as, as he goes through. I think he's looking for a foul here, but it's not a foul. Yeah. I think he's just stumbled. Maybe he was fatigued himself. But, you know, he just he, he sees spaces when other people don't see them. And, and he puts his pass through before defenders get in place. We checked with the SPL just before we came on here. There's nothing happening. The, the transfer deadline is midnight tonight. It's not going to happen now. Do you think that, that he will still be at Dens Park next season? I'll be very surprised if he's at Dens Park next season. Um, I'm not sure if it will be Celtic. I know that I know that Rangers also looked a month ago and are still, you know, Advocat's got this huge list, about 20, 24 players on it, and he's trying to work his way through it. Kinesia's on that list. He's obviously clearly on Martin and Neil's list as well, but um, I'm not sure if he'll go to the old firm, but I'd, I'll be very surprised if he's still at Dens Park. He wouldn't put a price on Claudia Kinesia, but he did just a couple of weeks ago put a price on Gavin Ray, £10 million. Um, Craig Brown was there today. I'm sure that £10 million. <laughs> I mean, Gavin laughed that off, to be fair. But he has. He's had a wonderful season, hasn't he, Gavin? He has, and it was capped by, you know, getting called up into the squad when Barry Ferguson got injured. Um, he's a great player, you know, he, he comes and he, he, he gets forward from midfield now as well. You know, and this is a header for his goal. That's a delightful mm. header because it's, you know, he's coming across it. And you see it again here, it's Kinesia as well involved in that one, as you can see. But Barry Smith puts in a good cross. Um, and, and Ray's there, he's waiting. I think Gus McPherson maybe stands off him a wee bit too much. I think it was Gus McPherson, yes it is. But that's a great header, he knows exactly what he's doing. The goalkeeper doesn't have much chance at all to stop that one from going in. So, it, you know, he has to score more goals though. Yeah, that's just his fourth of the season. I mean, we've got a couple of examples of him, of him pushing up and at least joining in the attack. Mm -hmm. I well, guess if he can add goals, you're yeah. looking more and more like the complete player in well, midfield. Well, I mean, if he starts adding goals regularly, you know, 10 to 15 goals for a midfield player, then you're talking about £10 million, pounds, but he's not in that bracket <laughs> yet. You know, but there's another example of him getting forward again, but unfortunately for him, he's offside this time. In fact, there were two players offside, yeah. but this is a great finish. You know, that, that's a classic finish that, you know, really calm and controlled. He's a good player. Craig told us he, he was watching Gavin Ray. He also wanted to have a look at Craig Dargo, and, and Dargo too had um, one or two highlights during the match, lowlights as well, perhaps. Well, I think he puts uh, he played well. He's always he's, he's very nippy, good striker. He puts Kamara in front here, very very pacey. You know, he times his run to perfection, gets away between two defenders, puts that through. I think the goalkeeper brought it. You know, you, maybe. His legs too far apart there, obviously, you know, and he, it's not the first time that's happened to him. Mm. Great this pass season. by San Juan too. San Juan, it was a terrific pass, you know, and I mean, Airdrie certainly missed that kind of skill, but he's pacey, he's got good control, he's looking up, he knows exactly what he's going to do, but the goalkeeper invites him to do that and he does it, mm. you know, but it's still a good finish. He's a good, he's, he's a good young striker and it, you know, you can understand why Craig Brown is there looking at him because we have a problem with strikers. And if the goalkeeper didn't learn from the first one, he, he's at it again here, those and legs I'm, again. You know, I, I think he actually misses at Dargo this time but it goes through, it hits his, the goalkeeper's right leg and the goalkeeper is very fortunate there's no one following up in the middle there, otherwise they would be 2-0 down. Right. In, in the week that Colin Henry made a headline or two, Craig Dargo chose to yeah, do that. Yeah, well this is just silly, you know, you can say it's inexperienced, youthful exuberance but that's just stupid, you know, he, he deserves he to go off here because he tries to, he tries to, he swings his elbow here, tries to hit Tweed, you know, that's enough to send him off, but he follows it up, you know, and, and, and he punches a wee again there, but actually Tweed was fouling, Tweed was pulling him back, you know, it's David and Goliath, if you see the size of him there, <laughs> but it was silly, especially in the week when we've had all the controversy about sure. Colin Henry's use of an elbow.